Hey there, I'm in the Pace Studio with Mike. And you probably recognize him from Full Frontal. I mean, you should. I mean, if they don't, don't you think they should? If they're tuning in, I hope they do. <laughs> or, or they should be tuning in. Or you should be tuning in. Right? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming by to talk to well, me. Well, thanks for having me. It's so fun to be here. Of course. It's very chill. I like the... Well, this is a comfortable space. It really is. As we were saying before, the, the chances of me being just sort of laid out here on the, the sofa by the end, just... Yeah. You're welcome to. We even have a blanket. <laughs> I might so nap don't... here. Can I stay and nap this afternoon? Of course. Oh, good. Okay. You know, always welcome. Okay. This is a place to be comfortable. This is just a chat between friends who met five minutes ago. Right. <laughs> but we're both from the Midwest, so. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Iowa and Minnesota. So, kind of brings that flyover country mindset, I Definitely. think. Definitely. Which is good. And I think it's what makes you somewhat relatable, more relatable, on the show. People see me... And there's some, there's some sort of Midwestern goodness and relatability, accessibility that kind of comes through somehow. Yeah. I think uh, that's... Right. Do you not think so? I mean, maybe you've lived in New York for too long, but I think there's a touch of that that, that doesn't go away. I hope that's true. I think that's sort of true. I Although I feel true. like often when I tell people... I mean, I've been in New York now for a long time. Right. But when I... And my parents were both from the, from the East Coast okay. also. So, so I was sort of a fish out of water in Minnesota, but... When I tell people often that, oh, no, I, I actually, I grew up in Minnesota, people are often shocked. Oh, really? Yeah, because, why, you know, I just look like standard issue, like, <laughs> New York Jew, <laughs> New York Jew, <laughs> you know, it all look the same, you know, so, yeah. Maybe I just thought we were talking, I was like, you said Minnesota, I thought, oh, that makes sense. I Although, don't know, but maybe other, I picked it up because I'm from that area. The, the, um, the makeup person today was from Minnesota, and she guessed, I think other... Other Midwesterners, sort of, there's a thing where you know that the other person is decent and pure of heart. <laughs> or maybe, as my dad always said, I couldn't hide my normal. Can't hide your normal. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, no matter what, it's like you can't really. I do my best to hide my normal. But <laughs> do you? Yeah. Don't do that. Okay. All right. <laughs> Don't ever be something pretend. Don't hide your normal under a bushel. No. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let it shine. <laughs> All right. I'll let my normal flag fly. <laughs> Woo! Always. Yeah. I think you should my always non just be, freak flag. Should always be yourself. Okay. I think that's important. Yes. So tell me about the show. I'm kind of interested what it's like to be out confronting people. Uh, just confronting it's a really people. Interesting thing. You know, I think that um, I think we tend to ask more questions than we confront people. Although sometimes, you know. We confront people and say, how can you believe this thing? Um, I do think that there is, and we all talk about this a lot, like what is, how do we uh, humanize people? How do we try not to be mean to people? Although I think, you know, I guess occasionally sometimes we will cross the line there. Um, but it's a, I mean, it's obviously it's a really weird, stressful time in the country right now. It's it's interesting to, to be out there and, and talk to people and be part of that and, um, it's, I will say that I'm glad that we're not having to go to any, any more conventions or <laughs> rallies right now for a bit. I could, it's, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Cause that gets to be a little wild. I live in a, in a primary state. Yeah. So in South Carolina, so I see, we see a lot of wild there that I don't know that all the rest of the country sees what I, you would see when you travel. Yeah. I think that one thing though, on the whole, People have been nice. Yeah. People have been nice to us, even with all the stuff that you see at the, you know, you'd see at the Trump rallies with the media, we want you dead. Here's a, you know, I think all of our experience in general is that we meet people and they're like, oh, oh, well, it's how nice to meet you. Um, and they, people want to talk. I and, mean, you know, we've met some really mean people. We've met some really mean people on all sides of the political mm -hmm. spectrum. But in general, people are nice and accepting. And the big surprise also is like at the, Republican National Convention, how many people would see Sam and be like, oh my God, I'm a huge fan of the show. You know, yeah. like completely unexpected. Yeah, because I think a lot of people want to maybe listen to other points of view, even if they don't agree. And if it's produced, you know, and it's put in a funny way, it's right. a little more accepted. Or even if they don't want to listen to other points of view, I think <laughs> for the <laughs> most part, people are... Uh, 
friendly and and open as human beings. People react to each other more as, as human beings. You know, it is sad that we could both get on Twitter and just say awful things to each other and just rip each other, rip each other to shreds, but then you meet face to face and it's like, oh, it's, you know, you're a human being. Right. So I try to remember that part. And I also tried to be much nicer on Twitter and not, not say really vicious, mean things, even though I sometimes feel them. Do you think that what level of problem do you think Twitter is to the political discourse? That's a really good question. I, do, I don't know how to quantify that, like, right. but it does feel that that aspect of, of life, of seeing these extreme opinions repeated on Twitter or Facebook and the amount of vitriol and the anger that there is something infectious about that. Um, and not in a happy, infectious sort of way, but in a uh, deadly disease, infectious sort of way. Kind of a mob mentality kind of way. There's definitely a mob mentality, and it makes you feel... Um, I think it makes us all feel scared and upset and tense, and you think that everyone is bad and evil, and, uh, and I don't want to believe that. Well, and I mean, what you're saying, I think what you're saying, what I heard, was that when you meet the people in person, people aren't aren't doing that. Like, they're not necessarily, you know... Generally not. Super, I mean, yeah. I'm sure some people are, because some people really are mean and bad. But, right. like, but the majority of people, it's almost like that cover of not actually having to say it to someone's face is the problem. Totally. Totally. You're somehow freed mm -hmm. from, like, all the rules and regulations of how human beings are supposed to interact with each other and not end up punching each other in the face or something. Um, yeah, Forget what their mom taught them about being nice. Do unto others, well, that kind of depends thing. Depends who their mother was, I suppose, but yeah. <laughs> well, I hope yeah. most people have nice mothers. No, yeah. Hope. We should hope that's the case. Yes, I don't know. yeah. <laughs> How do you take some of that um, negativity from, like, Twitter or comments or people that are... How do you put that aside and stay as positive as you can in the rest of your life? Like, can you separate that for yourself? Oh, no, I can't. I, it, that's you easy. Can't? I can't. Oh. I like in that and like looking at the news constantly because we, that's right. what we have to do. We have to look at the news constantly. It does. It gets me down. I think it gets all of us down. Mm -hmm. You know, after a while, you're just like, oh, I just, I just want to go back to a time when the news cycle, first of all, there weren't 30 news cycles in one day. <laughs> yes. And it wasn't like dominating your entire existence. Oh, my word. I, I just said that. this. Yeah, I right? said this to my mom the other day. I was like... I kind of miss the days of just like, you know, Tom Brokaw, Dan Rather would come on at 6.30 totally. and be like, here's the deal, and I'd just go about my day. Right. And if there was breaking news, it was really breaking. Like, you know. Right. The Challengers exploded. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, what I mean? Like, it was real breaking news instead of like constant tickers. Totally. Like, ah, I do not think. Overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. I do not think that we are evolved, that we have evolved to handle this amount of constant stimuli. And constant, just like <laughs> horrible input. Yeah, and it is—it's totally addictive. Like I'm just constantly—I took Twitter off my phone because I couldn't stop looking. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm—I'm I'm always looking for new strategies to disconnect in some way. I think that's totally workable. Is it? Well, I don't know. But then you can check your Twitter when you get home. Like then it's not always in your pocket. It's true. That makes a lot of sense yeah. to me. I, I don't know if you've had this experience, but they, there's just been mornings where I cannot even get out of the house because, I, like, so much stuff is happening, and I just keep reading. I just, like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I, take, I take a little bit, and then I, I let it go. I don't know. Do you? For me, That's yeah. That's because you, you live in South Carolina. In different, and it's, maybe. I don't know. I mean, the news is still 24 hour there. That's true. I but guess. it's just. How do you do it? You're a better person, I think. No. Maybe I'm just. When you're at your house and you've got kids around and you're. Maybe you yeah. just don't have time to look at it. I don't know. I just turn it off sometimes, though. Because I can get sucked into that wormhole mm -hmm. pretty quickly. Yeah. So I try to avoid it, but it's hard sometimes. Yeah. It feels like everything's out of control. Sometimes I feel like we're watching everyone collectively lose their mind. Oh, like, totally. <laughs> While also losing our own minds. Right. But, like, maybe yeah. if we just had conversations like this, people wouldn't be losing their minds. I don't know. You have to invite the entire population of the United States one by one. <laughs> Everyone's welcome. To sit welcome. on this really <laughs> comfy sofa in a very calming sort of studio. And everyone will just have a conversation. And it'll be better. <laughs> 
Maybe. You've only got 330 million people left. <laughs> I can do it. Yeah, totally. you can totally do it. I Set those goals high. Set them good, good squad goals. Yeah. Is that a, I don't even know what squad goals really is. It is. But I don't feel like you only do politics because you also write fun books. I do. And I, I also to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to That's talk about escape? that. I yeah, I've written. I, my fourth book just came out, and this was the first book that's a um, a middle grade. Mm-hmm. It's more for a middle grade audience, and it was just I wrote something that I want wanted my daughter to enjoy, yeah. uh, and it's just fun and silly and a fun sort of adventure story set in the real world, but with um, with fantasy elements. Uh, and the book launch party is tonight. If you're in New York City, come to Books of Wonder on 18th Street between Fifth and Sixth at 6 p.m. Doing the book launch party with Samantha B. It'll be fun. <laughs> wow. That was a really good plug. Have you practiced that? I No, that was actually the first time that I got it out that smoothly. I was, I'm proud no, of that. We didn't but even have you, a teleprompter. You just knew it? I just knew it, and I nailed it. You did. Um, but yeah, but I, I really I do enjoy writing. I always, always wanted to be an author, so it feels like um, I've achieved that. Yeah. I like the process of, of sort of getting lost in creating a book. And then how do you... Do you like take time off from like Smith Beer? Are you writing this in between? Like, do you it, yeah. do a funny piece and then you go home and you're like, I gotta go back to my book? I've, ten, I've done both where I've written stuff when I've had breaks mm-hmm. and then also where I write stuff when I'm working, which is super hard. But I generally, like, in that sort of situation, I try to like write a page a day. Okay. Page a day. You're a page a day kind page of guy. Page a day kind of guy because the time goes by anyways. Yeah. And then, like, at the end of the month, wow, I've got 30 pages written. Slow you know, and steady. Slow and steady. And then at the end of the year, instead of being like, oh, why didn't I do that thing? You have a manuscript. Wow. You're yeah. very disciplined. I, sometimes I am. Like right now, I'm not writing anything. So <laughs> I, I've, right now, like I've got to once again put my money where my mouth is and start the next thing and, and get writing. Right. But yeah. that's, that's an interesting way to do it. I don't know that, that all writers are that disciplined as far as one page a day. Is, is that discipline or is that just like just grinding it out? I think that it's discipline. I mean, it's like people that go to the gym every day. That's but here's, here's the thing. Discipline. The, bear, the hardest part, I think, is often just getting yourself to sit down and do something, right? Yes. And when you're writing, it's hard to get yourself to sit down. And if the barrier is so low, all <laughs> I got to do is do one page. It's a lot easier to be like, oh, okay, I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to write this page. And then, like, if you're lucky and you're feeling creative, you could write 10 pages that day. You know, yeah. you never know. And then you kind of feel like you got pages in the bank. Well, that's yeah. really good. Yeah. Then you have a vacation day. And then you have a vacation day. Well, it's true, because then inevitably there's going to be days where you're just like, I, I just can't. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much. Yeah. It's too much. Um, tell me about going from, you've done Daily Show, you've mm-hmm. executive produced stuff, you've done just kind of the gamut of anything media, I feel like. I mean, a lot. S- within, yeah, I mean, within sort of the new the sphere yeah. of like New York-based shows, I've done a, right. a number of those. I, I was lucky enough to work in The Daily Show, which is great. Uh, I worked on the first season of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, which mm-hmm. is also fantastic, and now with Samantha Bee. Um, so it's, you know, those have all been really interesting, great experiences. You kind of have a love of the news, obviously. I, or do you... I have a... Um, I'm not. I, I'm not addicted. I try not to, even though we just talked about being addicted to the news cycle. Like, right, right. I'm not always like news cycle, news cycle, news cycle person. I am is interested. Like, I think all of us who work in these shows interested in issues. Mm-hmm. You know, and want to talk about these issues. You, you know, that and try to find a way to take stuff that seems dry and boring, but is really important, and making mm-hmm. it fun and silly and having fun with it. So you'd say yeah. more issues driven. Yeah, I think cycle driven. Right. Yeah. yeah. So how do you decide which issue to tackle? Everyone is constantly like pitching ideas at the show. Mm-hmm. Like, let's do this, let's do this. And, th- and those ideas kind of build and some, you know, most of them die off uh, either because not enough people think they're good enough or they, you can't do them for one reason or another. Uh, and then those move forward. And, and it's a very collaborative experience, you know, as you're, you have, we all meet and like, what would be the approach for this? What we do this, how, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm speaking right now specifically about field pieces, right. which is the stuff that that um, that I write and produce. And then you know you go shoot the thing and you come back and you edit it and and that's how it works. Right. Yeah. What would make something not get used? Like what would be a what would be a hindrance to like an issue that you felt strongly about and you were going to produce it, and then you're like, scrap it. We can't do it. Sometimes there's stories that are just so sad. 
Okay. That there's no, that you just can't make them funny. Although, you know, one of the strengths of the show is that we've been able to, we've, there's sort of um, more leeway in terms of some of this, the stories we cover. And some of them are sad and powerful. And there's, I think that there's more of a sense of, you know what, this is an important story. Let's tell it. It doesn't, you don't have to be laughing every 15 seconds. We want to laugh somewhere in the peas, but right. like we're doing a story about Syrian refugees or a debate club in prison or something like that, that it's okay to take some time with that. Right. Uh, and really meet these people and tell, tell an important story that way. Yeah, so it doesn't always have to be ha ha. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be ha ha. Although I think there's also times when there's just some stories that I think that, that we know are just going to be fun and silly and everyone's right. just like, oh. Thank God. Let's just do a silly story that just, you know, f- silly and fun. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I I would think it can get kind of heavy when you're it thinking can, through those things. It can. Oh my gosh, it gets. It can be very heavy. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you find lightness? Like, wh- how do you find lightness when you're not there? When you're not like digging through stuff that makes you mad or makes you frustrated that you got to really put your mind into when you're at work, how do you find the lightness later? Um, it, I mean, it can be hard to shake off. You know, one of the things is that if you, like, you write comedy, like if you mm-hmm. are involved in comedy, like everyone you work with is like a, a, a damaged person who takes really horrible things and uses humor right. as a way to handle that. Right. And that's really what that all comes out of is this defense mechanism of like, this is really awful, how do we... I need to find a way to make myself laugh about this and make other people laugh about it. And that's what, that's where this show and, and shows like this come from. Um, it's hard to step away from a lot. I'm sure. Yeah. Can you tell me, and maybe this is too top secret. Yeah. Can you tell me any issues that you're looking at and you're like, I can't tell you. <gasps> I, I'm working on, I tried everybody. Yeah. I'm I working tried. on one right now <laughs> that I th- is, think is a big issue and it's, it's been a real Rubik's cube of a piece, but I'm excited about it. How to dig out it. of it? Yeah. Sometimes it is a ball of yarn that you got to kind of pull Keep through pulling, yeah. and figure out what's going to work. Yeah. 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 But that's good that you can take the time and do that and figure out what works. Yeah. And that's, again, that's, Sam has, has, you know, has been super supportive of like experimenting and taking time and trying to tell complicated stories. So, so that's great. Yeah. What, um, is there anything else you've got going on? I know we talked about the book and we talked about. Right. Show is there anything like are there are other things you're producing or doing or no that's pretty much that's it? enough <laughs> that's 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 well, enough for me I almost yeah. always ask because I'm like well maybe oh there's another going. thing that no I uh, between the the show and the books and having a having a family you know having a family is great yeah that keeps you busy it enough. does it does and trying to stay sane kind of where the reward is right I think at least for me yeah it keeps it keeps everything in check and in balance yes. So, and fair and balanced. It, oh Just God, kidding. Why? <laughs> you had to say that. Don't you think I did? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean. Right. Um, we, we were talking about earlier you getting a dog, and <sighs> you should get a dog. It's important I to me. Hope I have Mike a vicarious, is not this. <laughs> vicarious need for someone to get a dog because we can't really get a dog in our Brooklyn apartment. I know. But you have a yard. I have a yard. I probably should get a dog. We're Feels all, like a dream. Everyone I can at the reach. show. Oh man! Now I'm gonna have to get you. one and show everybody the picture mm-hmm. of uh, Micah's dog. Yeah, I have been looking. I'd like to get one. I'd like to adopt one if I can. Sure. Um, but he has some allergies, so I've got to be kind of careful about that. I'm gonna bring something in that makes him sick. Right. I think that would take some of the magic away. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I love this dog that makes me sick. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm looking. I guess a dog could live outside in my fenced-in yard. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Right. I may get one, and when I do, I'm going to put it on Twitter that you won't check. No. Oh, right, because, right, yeah. <laughs> don't check your Twitter. Yeah, put it on Instagram. I'll, My, I'll Instagram's Instagram friendlier, and I found that I just... You know yeah. what? Instagram, there's... A, I like Instagram. No complaining, really. hmm And it's just people's happy times. It's happy times. It's your um, brag times. Yeah. We'll probably take a selfie in a minute, and we'll brag about it. Sure. Okay. <laughs> or at the book launch party right. tonight. Yeah. Maybe I'll come by there. Yeah, do that. I will. Okay, good. Okay. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Talk to me. This, this was, was fun. great. Um, just wake me up in a few hours after I nap on this lovely sofa. I will. Okay, great. You're totally welcome All right. to. Great. <laughs> It'd be All great right, day for. Oh, I'm going to sleep too. Oh, my God. It's good. <laughs>